How's it going, guys? My name is Zach with The Movie Castle, and today we're going to be talking about Hammer, House of Horror. This is episode 9, and this episode's entitled Carpathian Eagle. This is from November 8th, 1980, and is directed by Francis McGay. Uh, Francis McGay, if you've been keeping up with this series, he's the guy who directed the episode Growing Pains. Uh, this episode stars Anthony Valentine and Suzanne Daniel, but also features a before-they-were-famous appearance from James Bond himself, uh, Piers Bronsnan. Um, he's not the biggest role ever. He's just one of the murder victims. He's a guy that shows up jogging towards the end of the episode, but it's like he shows up and you're like, Hey, that's Pierce Bronsden. So yeah, before they were famous appearance by an actor in a in a horror movie. <laughs> Just another good example of that. Uh, but this is a sort of serial killer mystery episode. Uh, you get a female serial killer who puts on various disguises, so it could be any beautiful woman, you know? Uh, she lures men away, and when they take her back to their rooms, she pulls out a knife, stabs them, but then cuts out their heart as a calling card. Uh, very gruesome there. We then meet our main uh, character, who's a police detective, and he finds out about a killer in the past that operated in a similar way, another woman that would cut out people's hearts. And there's an author writing a book about this killer, so the detective and the writer team up to try to figure out who's doing the killing nowadays. And a lot of people describe this as sort of a female Jack the Ripper. It's not really officially related to Jack the Ripper, but that's how a lot of people describe this. But yeah, a cool female serial killer uh, episode. If you guys like Jack the Ripper, Hammer did a Jack the Ripper movie, Hands of the Ripper, and I believe Synapse put out the Blu-ray for that kind of recently. Uh, but anyway, that's something uh, to check out. Uh, but anyway, I really do have to say with Hammer House of Horror is I do like the variety you get. Uh, we had a voodoo episode in the past. We had a classic monsters episode in the past. We had a haunted house episode in the past. There's lots of cool and different ideas here, and now they're doing a serial killer episode. I, I do like that constant sense of experimentation, and that gives this episode its own unique flavor. But that being said, it's not the best. And, and there are a few reasons for that. The, the killer itself, though, the killer is really interesting. You know, the idea of putting on different costumes, which, yeah, was already kind of done with Rude Awakening, but the idea of putting on costumes, the killer could be anyone, and, you know, a female killer ripping men's hearts out, it's a cool idea, especially when it's explained more at the end, but it's not in the best story, you know? So... A good killer, but she needs a better mystery, you know? Um, the mystery itself, like, when you do a mystery, what do you expect? You expect clues, and the clues will lead you down tracks, and you're tracking the killer down. One clue leads to another, you're finding out things, you're getting revelations. A good mystery should have some twists, some big reveals, it should be unexpected. But with this mystery, the detective just happens to hear about the other killer on the radio. It's kind of a stretch, it's kind of a hunch, but does ultimately prove to be right. So there's not really twists and turns, there's not investigation or detecting, it's just turn on the radio, I bet it has something to do with this, and then you're on the right path. It's, yeah, it's just not that much of a mystery. Also, we know who the killer is pretty early on. Uh, the killer wears disguises, and we see her, and we go, wait a minute, she's in disguise, but I know who that character is, and I kind of wonder if we weren't supposed to? Like, was this, was the disguise supposed to be enough where it could fool us? Because it didn't, but I don't know if that was the intent of the episode, or if they meant to tell you super early who the killer was. Because after this scene... There is this whole big scene with a red herring, and it's like, we know who the killer is, why are you bothering with a red herring at this point in the episode? I, I don't know. It's kind of like, not much of a mystery. 
we find out who it is too early, and yeah, it's just not as good as it could have been. There could have been so much more layers or complexity, big revelations, but uh, yeah, it's a good killer, but not that great of a mystery, you know? So it's, it's not the worst episode ever, it's just had so much potential to be better, you know? I like the killer, I just wish everything else was better, you know? So, uh, anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about the plot. I'm not going to be doing any major spoilers, but I do want to say my piece on a few plot points and make sure you guys have a basic idea as to what the episode's about. So I'm going to analyze it, but I'll be avoiding the end, you know, the twist. I, I won't say who the killer is. Anyway... We open up with a hitchhiker, and in this opening, they cut out her face, so she's out of frame. You don't know who she is. Hitchhiker, though, beautiful woman, and a guy picks her up and takes her back to this secret apartment that he has that no one really knows he has, a, a secret love den. And while they're there, before things can go too far, she pulls out a knife and kills him. And then after the credits, we meet our main character, this police detective, and he learns that the killer cut out this guy's heart, but that there had been a previous case with another murder victim who also had his heart cut out. So, it's a serial killer. Someone's going around seducing men and cutting out their hearts. So he hears this, and he's like, okay, I need to figure out who this killer is. And then he just happens to be listening to the radio later, and he hears an interview. This lady is writing a book, and the book she's writing is about an old-timey, like, hundreds of years ago in the past serial killer. And this killer cut out people's hearts. So he talks to the writer, and she says, Yeah, it's a very obscure story that I stumbled upon. Not too many people know about it. And that that show on the radio was the first time that she had done, like, press for the book. So... Someone, if they were inspired by this story, is either on the writing staff, like maybe they work in the publishing house, or there is one descendant of this person left. Maybe the killer is her or someone she knows, you know? So the author takes the police detective to this lady. She lives in a big mansion and she tells the story of the original serial killer. Uh, basically, is this countess who, while her husband was away, had an affair with a falconer. And the falconer gave her a little baby eagle. Well, the husband finds out about the affair, tortures her, locks her up in a tower. But one day, the eagle baby grows up. She trains it to kill her husband in his sleep and the eagle rips out the husband's heart. And after that, she's just filled with so much hate and rage that she takes over a hundred other men, seduces them, and has the eagle rip out their heart. So yeah, she was a serial killer way back in time, and the detective thinks, okay, someone who heard about this story probably got inspired to do these new killings. So he's following that lead, and he's looking at the publishing house, and he's also looking at the new countess in her house and having someone watch it. And there is someone there, even though she says she's alone, there's someone else in the house with her. And I won't spoil where this plot line goes, but let's just say it's something that I wouldn't have expected them to talk about on 80s TV. And luckily for Hammer, they treat the situation in a respectful manner. Uh, but I won't spoil any more of that. Um, but yeah, from there you have detective work, and you would think this be more in-depth. you think, like, you would talk to every single person in the publishing house, you think there'd be new big clues at murder scenes, but it's not really too much of that. It is, um, reacting to murder scenes. The killer does kill a few more times, and they, they go and see them, um, and... Really, though, it's it's not too much investigation. He just kind of happens to get lucky that uh, the idea of, hey, maybe it's related to this old serial killer happens to pan out, you know, but there's not really a good bunch of detecting or mystery or twist or following the leads and digging deeper. 
uh, none of that. He just happens to be on the right track from the beginning. Uh, and to be honest, a lot of the story kind of becomes a romance between the detective and the novelist. But, you know, it's like, okay, this is interesting enough. We're not going full romance, but it is taking away time from the mystery. So I, I don't know. At one point, the novelist takes the uh, detective to see her therapist friend. And the therapist talks about things like the collective unconscious or ancestral memory. And these are kind of interesting concepts. And maybe that's how the new killer is getting inspiration. But this ultimately doesn't really go anywhere. So it kind of teases a story that's better than the story that we got, you know, so that that's in there as well. So yeah, overall, it does lead to a pretty good final act. The last kill in this movie is pretty interesting. And then when you find out why the killer's doing what she's doing, and it leads into what she's going to do in the future, that final act reveal is pretty cool. And the killer's cool. It's just... <laughs> There's not enough of a mystery behind this. We know what's going on too early, and, you know, it's not a good mystery, you know? So, cool killer, not a good mystery, you know? Um, overall, the episode's still okay. You know, it's interesting enough. It didn't bore me. It didn't make me angry. But it definitely had so much more potential to be so much more. And that is a little bit disappointing, but it's still an okay episode. Um... That being said, next time we have Guardians of the Abyss, which I remember being a fun episode. I remember it being a little bit like The Devil Rides Out. So I'm looking forward to next week's episode. I think it's a pretty good one, uh, if I, my memory serves correct. Uh, but anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll leave a relevant playlist here on the bottom. This should be my Hammer playlist. Uh, if you guys want to see me talk about more Hammer stuff, I've covered classic monsters, I've covered more obscure films. I've also covered all the past episodes of this show, so if you want to see me talk about episodes 1 through 8, those will be there as well. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Relevant Hammer playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.